welcome again this is day number five of prayer plus action and today we're going to talk a lot about communication interaction all the fun things that you want in a marriage and i hope you have been having a great time so far when you get married you it's a joyful thing i like to attend weddings and when i do I see the people happy, especially as pastors, we do the, the weddings. We see the wedding from a different uh, perspective. And uh, you see everyone is excited, they're well-dressed. Ex and I can see in the family and the couple that they, they're happy. They want to, to be together for a long time. That's the goal. That's the expectation. Only to find that many years after they don't like each other, they don't want to talk to each other, they hardly can stand each other. And the question is why? How does this beautiful thing, this exciting um, relationship become so hard, so painful? If you are going to fix your marriage or you're gonna have a great marriage, you need three things. I've talked about that before. You need to have confidence in the fact that you can have a great marriage. And that for as believers, that confidence comes from God. You also need to have the confidence that when God gives you instructions, it's going to give you a good one and you're going to follow it and it's going to work. That's what we call a strategy. Not your strategy, but God's strategy, a good strategy. And you need consistency. Now, in the good strategy, God's strategy, one of the major parts of it is proper communication or friendship. Now, friendship is, is actually the strategy. Love one another and then friendship. But to have a good friendship, you need communication. And so today we're going to talk a lot about communication. communication and I'm going to show you why marriage is struggle in this area and how you can prevent that and what you need to do to repair yours if there's a if there's a problem if you are meeting me for the very first time my name is Ade. i'm a pastor and unconditional love coach what i do is i help men hit their goals in marriage and anyone else who wants to if you have a marriage and you discover that you're struggling and but you're doing well in other areas it's not your fault. It's just because marriage is spiritual and the rules of marriage is different from the natural. And so, But when you tap into God's strategy for marriage and you work it, you will be amazed at the kind of results you can get. God has designed this to be one of the best things that happen in our lives. But many times we don't know that and we don't get training for it. And that's why I'm here. I hope to help you hit those goals. The strategy that I'm sharing with you is the strategy to move your marriage from the struggling place where there's no hope to this thriving space or soaring space where there's joy and peace and continuous growth. All right. So a lot of marriages are struggling and in pain because one person has hurt the other and they don't know how to move forward. So we've been going through the steps to do that, to move from the red zone on this pyramid to the blue zone, from a place where there's only zero to 10% of peace and joy in the marriage to when there's always 90% of peace, 90% of joy, there's connection and there's results in your marriage. I wanna show you how to do that. And we've been running through uh, the steps to do that, and they are broken into three levels. The first level is your heart. Work on yourself to work on yourself so that you're healthy enough to move forward. A lot of times when your marriage is not working, you are having pain, you're having arguments, you are, there's no intimacy anymore. Your spouse, your husband or your wife looks like a stranger in your house. You're wondering what happened here. Now, a lot of time is because of some of the trauma, some of the pain that you brought into the marriage. That doesn't mean that you are the problem, but those pain are being, those hurts are being 
amplified by your spouse. So in order for you to properly see them, you need to work on your heart. And the illustration I've given before now is when, when I first started to learn swimming, I only started this year, only started this year. Uh, and the first time in, in, in the water on the deeper side of it, I couldn't see anyone. I, I, and right now, if you put me in any body of water where my feet do not touch the ground, I would stop seeing everything around me to a point. Why? Because I'm a little bit better now. But when, once I'm afraid of my life, this, the chances of seeing what's going on around me diminishes very quickly. And so when you are in pain and you're struggling and trying to survive, it is very, very hard for you to notice the pain, the struggle of your spouse. And that's why a lot of problems occur in marriages. When, when you don't, when, when you are not seeing your spouse, and your spouse is drowning as well, and they can't see you, then you become problems to one another. So how do we fix that? We fix the heart. And when all that is in place, then we need to work on communication. Because now you have a lot of love in your heart that you're able to handle your spouse's challenges, your spouse's errors, your spouse, spouse's foolishness, I call it. We all have them, or craziness. We all have them. Now, when you're in this space, you will you will find that you're able to communicate better. In fact, half of your communication problem disappears when you are in the right state of mind. Half of your communication problems disappear when you are in this state where you are filled with God's love, filled with God's joy, filled with God's peace, and you're centered. There are three levels of communication that I'm going to talk about. I don't think there are only three levels. I just think that I'm going to talk about three levels. The first one is the connection level. You need to be emotionally connected with your spouse such that you like each other, you're fond of each other, you miss each other when you're not there, you communicate with each other. That's, a, that's one level. That's a basic level. There's a second level where you become total partners, total partners. And the last level when you become intimate partners. It is important that you like your wife. It is important that you enjoy seeing your wife. Um, you, you laugh with your wife, laugh with your husband you are the wife watching this then it is important that your partners in everything partnership is the next level of this communication how do you communicate so that you can share goals share finances share resources and connect also spiritually and then intimacy is the highest level of connection because at the level of intimacy you're not only connecting intellectually you're not only connecting financially you're also connecting in your mind in your spirit and in your body so you want to build your communication in all these three ways if you want to change your marriage you're going to work on knowing how to connect properly with your wife knowing how to enroll her in whatever you're doing everything that you're doing and then finally to connect spirit, soul, and body. We're talking about the third level here. You need to connect spirit, soul, and body. Not just um, just have sexual intercourse. That's not all. And that doesn't even work well when the emotional connection is not strong, when the spiritual connection is not strong, when the intellectual connection is not strong. All of this, it's physical connection, intimacy, physically, is greatly enhanced when every other connection is there. So all of these are what you need to work on if you want your marriage to be transformed permanently. So you work first on your heart, you work on your connection with God, then you work on your communication with one another. And that means friendship, of course. Uh, connecting with one another in fondness and, like, and liking each other and having the space to be yourself. Then connecting, enrolling each other into everything you do as partners, and finally connecting spirit, spirit, soul, and body. That's it. And if you can do all of this, you will have testimonies to share. And I look forward to hearing your testimony. I look forward to 
knowing that you are putting this strategy into practice. Now, if you have not downloaded my cheat sheet, friendship rebuilding cheat sheet, please go to adesobanjo.com slash friends. It's free. That's a good place to start if you uh, just want to start with friendship rebuilding. Then you go there, adesobanjo.com slash friends. It's a one page PDF that you, reminds you of what you need to do to rebuild friendship in your marriage. And uh, uh, it comes with a video that's going to help you. And the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Continue to love like Jesus and make mega impact. Bye for now.